Power Charting. I'm your host, Bruce Frazier. Wyckoff stock selection today with Johnny Scan. We want to start, though, with a relative strength study, and uh, which is, I believe, fascinating. Relative strength is uh, our secret weapon in Wyckoff, combination of Wyckoff and relative strength together. Important one-two combo. And so let's get started. We're going to look at mega cap growth in the form of the NASDAQ 100 to blue chip stocks, looking at the Dow Jones Industrials, and then a mini case study in Netflix because of the important break that it had yesterday. And uh, the thing about Netflix is it's one of the FANG stocks, very dominant, predominant stock in the NASDAQ 100. So it's an important proxy for us to look at. Very brief update on inflation and then Wyckoff stock selection with Dr. Scan. Anyway, here is a historic chart of the NASDAQ 100 mega cap secular trend is rising from 2009 to the present. Quite a spectacular run. The question is, does mega cap and growth in, in particular always outperform other areas of the market. In this case, we're going to look at blue chip. And there's a reason for that. And so we're going to ask that question today. And this chart is just to orient you. You've seen this chart in the past. And it has these uh, put call uh, relationships on the bottom. And so uh, let's move on. So the big question, do growth stocks always outperform? Here is the Dow Jones Industrial Average to the NASDAQ 100 as a relative strength chart. Line is dropping. And this means that the Dow Industrials are underperforming the NASDAQ 100 on this relationship, this ratio. So uh, here is, we are looking at the period from 2018 over here to the present 2022 downward trend in 2020. This became uh, deeply oversold on a Wyckoffian basis, down, downward trending channel becomes oversold. Here, after a cascading decline, looks very climactic. And then it tests again, doesn't get below the bottom of the channel the second time. We call those preliminary support. Then a selling climax comes in and takes out preliminary support briefly shallowly slowing the momentum, slowing of the rate of decline, and then an automatic rally. So those two in combination to each other are important because this sets the upward and outer ranges uh, or certainly play a role in that. Since that time, you can see all the way across here that the Dow Jones Industrial Average to the NASDAQ 100 is roughly performing at parity. This is a beautiful accumulation type structure in Wyckoff analysis. And that is, is that it concludes with a spring, which is a break of the important support area of the market, a test, and then a change of character rally right back up into the structure of the range bound condition. And now it's attempting to uh, return back up to the resistance area. This may not be done yet. Now, some of you are questioning whether the Dow Jones Industrials is a good measure of blue chips or whether uh, it's appropriate to compare this to the NASDAQ 100. I have a reason for doing this because I'm going to compare the present to the past. So see if there's a family resemblance between now and let's go back to the period of 1996 to 2001. And here's this downward trend. This actually was a 10-year trend in the NASDAQ 100 back then, which culminated with a V-bottom oversold condition underneath the channel. S different structure in this accumulation versus what we just looked at in the current market environment. This one was much more of a V-bottom, sharp, sudden with a quick reversal, 
and an upward trend up and out. Now, I've shown you in the past that you can do relative strength analysis on uh, with point figure and do horizontal counting. That's the chart on the left. This count here from the count line at around 325 counts up 710 to 820. So that's a substantial outperformance is the way we would interpret it of relative strength for the Dow to the NASDAQ 100 growth stocks of that era. And in fact, look what happened. 710 to 820, I marked these counts on the vertical chart, on the line chart in this case, here and here, and look at where it fell right into, it had actually a climactic throwover, sharp reaction, range bound condition. This sets up a new count for another advance, which is the final relative strength high. It was not the final high for the blue chip stocks, they continued to go higher, but the NASDAQ 100 was so deeply washed out in that time period. And look at how the relative strength point figure in basically indicated that the NASDAQ 100 stocks were going to get deeply washed out. And they were and the in two phases. And this concluded with a, a parity situation. But... It was a long time before the NASDAQ 100 stocks, the growth stocks started to outperform again, which was around 2008, 2009 was the beginning of their new bull run. So now we have a historic example to compare of Dow Jones to NASDAQ 100. Let's compare then to now. So keeping in mind that this is a very long-term uh, trend that in 96, this is about a 10-year trend. And here we have more than a 10-year trend, 12-year trend. And we looked at these two accumulation structures. And now we can see here that this one on the bottom, the current environment is actually larger in duration than the one above it. And this one, uh, when it it when and if when and if it completes this basing structure, wherever that might be, and it's only going to be proven with a jump up and out, and then a trend is that once we get that, if we get that, this will be a much larger structure. I have done the point figure count on this. I'm not ready to publish it yet because it looks like an un uncompleted structure at this time. But if it does come out of here, it says blue chip value type stocks are going to outperform the NASDAQ 100 for some period of time into the future. And so we will be watching closely for that. And uh, just so that you can uh, see, so keep this in mind. I just also want to point out this part is look at the relationship and the comparison of these different peaks and troughs in the final phase of the downtrend and how there's such a family resemblance between these two relative strength lines in the two different time periods. And both end with a cascading drop into a final low. And it's just eerie how similar they are to each other then to now. A lot of debate, a lot of discussion about whether or not the dot-com era back then has a similarity or relationship to now. But on a Wyckoffian basis, you can really, really see the family resemblance of these two NASDAQ 100 growth periods of out and under performance, but there's a lot yet to be uh, seen in the current environment. Okay, case study, Netflix, important fang stock. Uh, and for much of the last decade, the fang stocks, in this case, Netflix was on a relative strength tear. This is a, an important advance you can see here in both price and relative strength that this was an important advance 
leadership position that put a lot of institutions and a lot of individuals into Netflix. Well, then we had a break of the relative strength and price lower high here in both, which showed that the relative strength was taking a break. And so was price, important decline, which led to another advance. But look what how the next advance was different. Initially, it's outperforming, but then it goes into a period of underperformance on relative strength. This is an upside non-confirmation because it did not make a new high with the upthrusting action in Netflix itself. So people were finding value or benefit in seeing a new high in Netflix and relative strength is, is issuing warnings. And in fact, that proves to be an upthrust after distribution formation. Let's do a point and figure chart on the left. The top count is this area right here. You can see that count and that count goes 355, 275. This is just a straight price chart point and figure. And we fulfilled that count uh, at the point in 2021 of a redistribution that formed new count. This count went lower and we are very close to fulfilling the bottom of this projected range 252 to 192. So we are in some kind of a climactic decline, not a reason for action because a climax needs to build a new cause which could either be a move down or it could be a move up. It's too early to tell. This is the reason why Coffians wait for the cause to be built and then analyze the structure. And so I would say just to watch, pay attention here and recognize that Netflix is just a beautiful example of a FANG stock that has completely fallen out of favor. Large institutions are trying desperately to get out of the stock and the large composite operator types, the very savvy ones, were getting out very early in this uh, uh, trend here back in 2020. Okay, so that's that. We have a relative strength chart of the distribution structure, and that's this area here. And you can see this area is, uh, is evaluated in two parts. You can see the, the green box here. So I took these in small segments because of the uh, distributional paradox. You can overcount, easily overcount distribution. And here we have a ratio of 26 to 44, 35 to 40, both roughly nest in the same area. We're not there yet, but we're getting awfully close. Again, doesn't mean it rallies, it just means it pauses. And so we want to see what kind of a causal structure accumulation redistribution forms at the conclusion of this decline. So really an interesting case study. And so let's stop right here and give the rest of our time to uh, Mr. Johnny Scan, and he will be with us momentarily. And the last thing I want to do is just show you the CPI chart, point figure chart back to 2000 CPI, just hit eight and a half in the March number. And so this is only updated uh, through the seven and a half level from the end of the year and or roughly the end of the year. And so now eight and a quarter to 1188, we're right in the middle of this objective range. So just an update and we'll be right back. Now let's turn our attention to Johnny Scan. John Colucci, how are you? I'm doing wonderful, Professor, and you? Uh, fantastic, and I'm so glad you're here. By the way, John and I just did two Your Daily Fives back-to-back -back Wednesday and Thursday of this week on fantastic scans using Bollinger Bands, the Bollinger Band Squeeze, and also the Keltner, and using the uh, Keltner uh, also in a squeeze uh, scanning method. Very effective. It was most impressive. But anyway, our attention today is on the Wyckoff Market Report, which is edited by John. It's a fantastic tool. And John, uh, let's give you as much time as possible. Take it away. Outstanding. So 
Let's look for some themes that are emerging in the world of Wyckoff and how they translate into uh, everyday trading for us. So here we have uh, the first page of the newsletter, top-down method of Professor Booth special there. And uh, all of these, we have particular features in the area of Wyckoff that deal with interactions with support. Those are called springs and interactions with resistance, which can be up thrusts or breakouts. We're gonna take a look at what is springing, what hit areas of support and came back up, and also what is performing, outperforming, I should say, on the breakout basis. So here's what we have this week in the newsletter. We've identified about nine stocks that are springy, in, uh, in the sense that they interacted with support and moved back up into a structure. Professor, what are your thoughts on the importance of springs? Well, so I think springs are just a real critical event because they come at conclusions of accumulations or reaccumulations. And then uh, they have a distinctly different or changed behavior in terms of price and volume in that they go from being, you know, maybe uh, range bound, lackluster, probing the lows to all of a sudden coming to life and having a really uh, stiff ascents uh, upward into the area of resistance and beyond. So it's just a fantastic juncture in a price chart. Another area that we can look at are the breakouts. So these are stocks that have moved up and over prior resistance and have held in that area, signifying the acceptance of a higher price among traders. What's the significance of a higher price being the norm, Professor? Well, what's beautiful here is, and by the way, John, thank you for designing a market newsletter just for me. I'm, You're I'm so I'm so grateful that you've done this, and uh, you've just really organized my life, made it very efficient for me. I get to look at a lot of charts, look at the right kind of charts, and it makes me very happy. So anyway, having said that, the thing about breakouts is is that they come in the scan. It, the scan is designed to find breakouts after important final testing actions in accumulations or reaccumulations, which would either be a spring or a last point of support, which results in a very uh, important ascent up and out, which results in a breakout. And what we like to see is a breakout that is completing accumulation which means that the stock is really in its the second or third inning, potentially of an important upward move. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some of the stocks we have. I'll make the stock charts bigger themselves and we see what we have. So here is one of the early spring, uh, it's the first on the spring list, I believe, is Tap Molson Coors. And a very interesting set of features here. Uh, certainly the spring-like bar is what we caught on the scan because we caught it out of this area. And it's not necessarily all the way down to prior support, but it went a substantial portion of the way, which would give us a characterization as a last point of support rather than an actual spring, which must be the low of the formation. And we see a spring here, we see another springy action here, another springy action here, but look at the quality of this move after this final spring. What does that move say to you, Professor? Well, notice the, uh, the ascent of the move as it's uh, gone from a last point of support, what we'll often refer to on the chart as a local spring, which is what you picked up in the scan, and note the just near vertical ascent, which shows that the stock is in strong hands. It's been well accumulated in the prior structure, which is really easy to see here on this chart. So uh, really a beautiful change of character in the way the stock is rallying. And we have a lot of corroborating evidence here. 
OBV lines in the proper order. For the most part, they rolled around a little bit, but in the proper order with upsloping character, the 200, uh, the 50 has uh, across the 200. We're waiting for the 200 to turn up. It's starting to do that. Relative strength, a personal favorite of your professor, been strong for quite a while. And look at the relationship of this low structure spring to the move over the relative strength moving average by the red line over the blue. Very interesting stuff there, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And we really love to see these setups where we see the relative strength confirming the price. And so as you get an upward sloping trend and relative strength is doing the same thing, that is just really a fantastic setup. Notice the financial attributes here of the stock of PE, uh, just over 12 with just under a 2% yield, starting to see a fair number of low price value oriented stocks with reasonable returns, giving us evidence of accumulation and longer term uh, CO, composite operator involvement. Very interesting turn of events there, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. And uh, that's exactly what we're looking for is we're looking for institutional CO sponsorship of higher prices, which is what a good accumulation structure demonstrates. Right. We've got another one. This one is also very impressive because it did spring a very clear local structure in this area, upsloping OBV positive cross 5,200, nice moves on the relative strength, even a little head fake on the relative strength, dipping down below for just a minute and then back up. But look at the quality of that rally off that spring-like event at 138.19. Uh, Very interesting. Love the uh, vertical ascent there in the month of April. And it really shows that the stock was well accumulated going back to looks like October and possibly earlier, even before the beginning of the chart here. Interesting that it's also at or near the end of the quarter into the new quarter. What does that tell you? Well, oftentimes what will happen is, is that accumulation will take place throughout the quarter and the stock will be kept in check into the new quarter new quarter starts and then uh, the uh, demand just floods available supply, which is a small and puts it in a position to start to really uh, accelerate. And the whole quarter couldn't often be up for stocks like that. Nice. Another one from the healthcare area, tenant healthcare. And this one we're catching a little bit earlier in the process. It has not really completed a breakout, but look at the uh, bar at uh, 7781. Very spring-like there, wouldn't you say, Professor? Yes, for sure. And also a reaccumulation type structure on a rising scale. It's a series of stair-stepping reaccumulations that all might be one giant accumulation going back into mid 2021, and then in a position here to jump up and out and potentially start a more important persistent uptrend. As we go down the list of springs, what we are finding is stocks that are closer to the spring event. So as you go down the list, you're actually getting closer to the spring, could be more meat on that bone, so to speak. Let's switch over to the breakout category and definitely see a little breakout here. What do you say, Professor? Uh, this is a stock that I've been campaigning for a while now, and I really like the whole theme of containers packaging. And you can see a beautiful accumulation has been forming in this stock for months and months. And then finally, an attempt to go to resistance in February, March, pulls back one last time and then just uh, starts a really important ascent. And uh, the most recent pullback at the beginning of April is just a really nice local spring that sets up the conditions to start a meaningful uptrend. So, uh, and confirmed by relative strength. 
Absolutely. And this presents us with a number of uh, true springs, certainly down here, 123.95. Look at the character of that bar and its low point. Very interesting true spring there back in December. And then we had a series of low tests that uh, really uh, gave us this ultimately uh, this important rally in the new quarter which itself was a springy event uh, on a uh, local structure, March, April area, tested the 50 and boom, right up. Big move, short period. We like to see those. 20 seconds left in the broadcast. We're gonna do just a couple more stocks in the overtime segment, but John, uh, tell us where to go to uh, subscribe and find out more about this letter. Well, check out our friends over at uh, Wyckoff Analytics. They have uh, got this available on the landing page, so you can go, go there, check it out. It's the Wyckoff Market Report, published every Friday, so you've got uh, current information heading into the weekend. Uh, there you go. This is a go-to tool for Wyckoffians. I use it just about every darn day. And uh, John, let's look at some more charts in the few uh, extra minutes that we have. Absolutely. So Packaging Corp of America, very interesting chart. Here's one from the food complex, and that is uh, Kraft Heinz. Look at that move. This move is underway. This is the live chart today. 2.43% on the day, 4 million shares traded. Average volume here is about 4 million, but it's lately EMA 10, 5.7 million. Something's going on here. What do you see, Professor? It's a stock that I've been campaigning for a while now, and you can see a fantastic reaccumulation structure going back really to August of last year, and then look at the near vertical launch in February up uh, and through resistance pulls back into a last point of support or a backup on the chart and uh, confirmed by relative strength. And then it just starts to ascend at a very rapid rate. Uh, beautiful uh, illustration of completed accumulation. May have to pause in here. It's getting a little ahead of itself but the yield is quite high. Institutions, I think, want to own stocks like this. I'm getting a funny sense that we're finding things that you're interested in through the newsletter. Oh, absolutely. It's such a great organizing tool for me. And now some of these stocks, Packaging Corp, uh, Kraft Heinz, I, I owned prior to that, but absolutely love the structures. And I love the fact that the newsletter is picking that up, which just shows that you're, you've done a wonderful job of scanning for Wyckoff setups. Well, we're catching, we're catching the master's uh, wake here. We're finding things that uh, you're interested in. And I take that uh, very seriously. So our next stock. Well, is... like I said, thank you so much for designing a newsletter just for me. Absolutely. <laughs> Southwest <laughs> Gas, look at this near vertical launch here and very, very interesting volume feature here. Look at this, 4 million shares in a day and that stock didn't budge. In fact, it sprung after that bulge of volume. That's an effort result issue. That's one of our core principles in the world of Wyckoff. Professor, share with the folks at home what that principle is. Effort result. Effort and result. So that the idea is looking for ease of movement where prices are able to go up, even volumes expanding, but it results in a strong price action. Here you can see a beautiful ascent up and out of a very well-defined reaccumulation structure, pauses for just a little bit, and then the vertical ascent just continues, which shows that the stock is in strong hands. Supply is, is non-existent or minimal, and demand is rising. And that creates explosive upside potential. Look at the run in this thing, 62, 61, 62 at long-term support in this area. 
Now we're trading just over 90. That's a 30% run in two months. Boy, I could use one of those this year. I, I am in the dis gas distribution space, not in this stock, sadly, but it's uh, absolutely beautiful. Well, you can't treat them all, but Patterson Dental, this one is giving us a little bit of moment of pause here. It's uh, gone up to historical resistance and has not uh, succeeded in overcoming that. We picked this up as a uh, breakout and a backing up action because it went past this long-term area here. We're looking back about a quarter on the breakout uh, resistance level, and it did overcome that quite uh, handily, but a little bit of give and take there, a little more than I would like to see. What are your thoughts, Professor? Yeah, it's, it's uh, rallied up into uh, somewhat of a local climax, which also coincides with overhead resistance a classic place for a pause. Relative strength is still confirming the uptrend. And so uh, I believe that uh, time could be spent up here in the area of resistance, but uh, it could very well set up a condition for uh, initiation or uh, adding to positions. We have uh, one from the medical field here, Nuvasiv, and a uh, little bit earlier in the process here, just broke out, trying to maintain uh, its levels over the 5758 area, 6047 on the recent high, down a little bit towards resistance today, trading about 58 half right now, and uh, earlier in the process. So this is something from deeper on the breakout list. As we go down the breakout list, we're getting closer to the breakout event itself. What are your thoughts here, Professor? Well, it's uh, part of that um, uh, healthcare theme that is acting so well. The relative strength is just now emerging, which is confirming the breakout of overhead resistance at a local level. And it looks as, a, as though it's a stock that wants to, after some kind of a pause and digesting the overhead resistance wants to, to keep working its way higher. So uh, definitely uh, a good look, good looking stock that could be very ready to uh, start to ascend. Yeah, a little earlier in the process, but yes, the shoots are there. Yeah. Now here's a real breakout winner. We've seen a lot of the food product stocks taking off and we see uh, back in mid-March, a structure that really functions as a spring. One of the important things to always remember is any Wyckoff element could be satisfied by a single bar or a group of bars acting in concert to actually create that effect on the chart. What are your thoughts here, Professor? That's, that's a monster move. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, setup. You can see the resistance that sets in May of uh, last year. And this is where it pulled back to old resistance, new support, stops right there, and then just starts to ascend. And I contend that stocks like this, uh, even though they are in a stiff ascent, are uh, still very viable. And it could be with a little acceleration here that it's going to get a pause. And a pause may create an opportunity for uh, initiation of positions. Very interesting that this is moving so well because, of course, as the food products, cereal manufacturer and whatnot, they're very sensitive to the commodity space and wheat, corn, all been doing some interesting things. But yet we see even with the potential for expense profile to be up on the balance sheet, the folks out in the trading space like this stock because they're willing to pay more for it than they were last month. Wouldn't you say? Yes. It uh, uh, looks great, great yield, confirmed by relative strength. What's not to like? Absolutely. Last one we have today is another one from the medical space, Regeneron. And look at this structure with the possible backing up action completing itself or even initiating now. Great OBV moving averages in the right order, confirmed by relative strength. Potential here is very interesting, wouldn't you say, Professor? 
a really uh, fantastic look. Note the um, hinge that goes into uh, February, March, where you have higher lows, lower highs, resolves itself into a nice vertical ascent. And so now it's above resistance formed last September, probably uh, is uh, gonna have a pullback and we wanna see it shallow, dull pullback, stay above old resistance and uh, relative strength is confirming the initial leap up and out here. This would be interesting to look at the width of the Bollinger Bands into this area before that ascent in the late February, March area. My guess is we would see those bands constrict. What are your thoughts, Professor? Absolutely. There's no question that that's, in fact, what happened. Became dull and quiet after an initial launch in October, and uh, that was confirmed by relative strength being above its moving average and making higher lows, which shows that the stock was ready to outperform. In fact, that's just what it did. Definitely check out Professor Bruce's YD5 from Wednesday this week. Very important uh, look at the constriction of the Bollinger Bands. And then of course, we did one the next day, the TTM squeeze available on ACP, but we showed you how to code that on your own in the original stock charts platform. Fantastic stuff. John, thank you so much for taking us on a tour through these great stocks. And we look forward to doing a lot more of this in the future. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.